Hey guys, it's Ed Bud here. Welcome back to the channel and also welcome to another long run shoe test. Turning into a bit of a series this one. So today up on the test block for that Sunday long run is the Saucony Endorphin Pro. I felt it was in the shade a little bit this week so I wanted to get it out the box and give it its chance to shine. If you tuned in last week you would have known that I was going to test out the New Balance Beacon 3 this week on the long run. But after 7 miles or 11.2 kilometres in it yesterday, with some faster alternate miles thrown in there, I think around 10 miles is probably going to be the upper limit for this shoe for me. That side, the Beacon still performed admirably well on those fast miles and also when I pulled back the pace for some easier miles in between. More on that Beacon 3 soon where I've ploughed some more miles into it. I need to unlock the secrets of that mystery material midsole. No one seems to understand why they have branded it Fresh Foam X when it's quite clearly Fresh Foam. Anyway, that's another story for another day. So why did I decide on the Endorphin Pro for today's long run? Couple of reasons really. I'd hit 42 miles already by Sunday morning. I wanted a little extra cushion underfoot. Not that I was feeling too beaten up, I just really fancied getting out in some power run PB once again. And also I wanted to refresh my feelings about the Endorphin Pro in mind of producing a video for you guys which has been much requested comparing the Endorphin Pro and the Endorphin Speed directly together. So watch out for that on the channel very soon. Those of you who like the conversions, 42 miles is 67 kilometers. So I set out pretty early on the Sunday, around about 7.39 in the morning. I got that 50 mile route now that I enjoy testing out. There's about 831 feet of elevation on that route. That's about 253 meters. I really do like this route as it forces you to be very conservative about your pace and the effort that you're putting into your running. If you're gonna last the distance, you've gotta be really, really careful with your pace. Main goal for me today was to keep the pace under eight minutes a mile and then work on that endurance and form as I went. 15 miles is roughly 24 kilometers, give or take a little bit. I felt the Endorphin Pro performed admirably well for me today. Did everything that I needed it to do, pretty much. This route that I undertook today does have a general climb all the way up to about the ninth mile, I think. Then there's a mad descent of about 250 foot. It's about 76 meters over the course of about a mile. So you have to be really, really cautious as you're going down there. If you fly down, you're undoubtedly going to injure yourself, going to cause some strains here and there. Certainly my right hip started barking at me a little bit going down that descent. It really is quite steep. It is a bit weird because you're really waiting for that downhill where you don't have to put in so much effort where you've been gradually climbing up to that point. But then when you start going down it, you pine for some more uphill because it's just so hard on the legs. Nevertheless, what doesn't beat you makes you stronger. Certainly the speed roll technology did help a little here though. I made sure to keep the cadence nice and high, constantly reminding myself to keep pumping those arms and not to fly down there too fast. Certainly the traction on the Endorphin Pro and the Endorphin series in general seems to be fantastic. The carbon rubber here performed really well for me today across all the surfaces, grippy on road, on any loose stones and things. I still felt some decent push off, never felt like I was sliding around too much. Some of the country lanes I ran on today were just so quiet and empty. I barely saw a soul. There are a few runners out from the Yeovil Town Road Running Club. Did see Paul Card. I did see Nat Robbins as well. I had no music on today. So no dangers of running right on the crest of the road pretty much the whole time, where possible. Average heart rate today was around about 137 beats per minute. I think the max I got to is about 148, which was going up an exceptionally steep section. Certainly did feel nice and easy today and flowing in the Endorphin Pro. I wasn't out there to try and break any personal bests or anything like that. But I really did benefit from that power run PB foam. Temps were a little bit lower today, around about two, three degrees Celsius lower than perhaps on my last test run, or at least my last long run. So got to take that into account. One slight issue I did encounter today in the Endorphin Pro was having to re-tighten the laces around about seven miles. Left shoe was a little worse. Now bear in mind that my left foot is a little bit shorter than the right foot. As you may have noticed in some of the videos I've produced recently about the Endorphin Speed, I haven't needed to use a runner's knot in that shoe. I think it's perhaps due to the more substantial gusseting around the tongue in the endorphin speed and that slightly thicker tongue also. Here though, I think I do need to utilize a runner's knot in the Pro. The supplied laces do feel a little bit different between the Pro 
and the Speed. Seems to be a slightly thicker lace used in the Speed, and the laces in the Pro don't seem to have quite as much give, strangely. I know Andy, the FOD runner, has had a few issues with the laces in the Speed, but I've had the same problem but in the Pro. So I retightened them around about seven miles and I didn't have to bother doing it again. I think if you are looking to get the absolute full power out of the carbon plate and the foam in the Endorphin Pro, then you've got to look at a runner's knot really. Maybe as the foot expanded a little bit towards the latter sections of the run, that's why I didn't have another problem with lacing, who knows. Another thing, I do feel that you get a bit of a benefit from the outsole midsole shape on the Endorphin series, going up hills. There's one section there where there's a 140 foot hill climb, I think it's about 42 meters total over about 0.4 of a mile so it basically just goes like that and it's not nice when you're at the bottom certainly these let my energy sap to legs roll up to the top of the hill though it's not the fastest anyone's going to make that hill climb certainly a nice stern test towards the end of a longer run so the pros worked out very well on the long run test today i mean they should do really with all that cushioning and the price but comfort wise the upper left my foot feeling fine so good in fact that i was able to slip my feet into my Jordan 5s, which are one of the more harsh shoes, certainly when you consider what we've got available in 2020. Certainly all of the testing that I've done in Power Run PB based shoes so far shows that it can easily rival some of the competitors who are using the same PBAX based foam. I think it's a testament to the footwear and perhaps improved fitness that I still feel like getting out and doing a cheeky three miles or 5k to top up my mileage this week to 60 miles. That's about 96 kilometers. So certainly very successful run today and one that's left me feeling really great. In terms of wear as well, there's barely any wear there at all. Carbon rubber's holding up really well and the midsole's only feeling better and better the more miles I put into it. Next week in the long run test, we will have the Adidas Boston 9 on the blocks. So do tune in next week so I get on with that one on that 15 mile effort. If you've got any opinions or views on utilizing the Endorphin Speed or Pro over those longer distances, let me know down in the comments. Time for a musical interlude. I've really got back into Tame Impala recently and I dug out my vinyl copy of Inner Speaker. What an awesome cover that is. I really love Lucidity and Why Won't You Make Up Your Mind on this one. They feature on the, I think it's side B of the first album. It's kind of like a double album when you get it on vinyl. They are recorded really loud as well, so when you place them onto the turntable and drop the needle down, you're treated to a really powerful sound. I find Tame Impala great on those longer runs. I didn't use any music today, but I think on next week's long run, I'll go for Inner Speaker. I thank you for sticking with us to the very end of the video. If you haven't done so already, it will help the channel out a huge amount if you'd hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when new videos launch. Another way to get us out to the masses is to give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.